breaking news. A suspect is in custody after an hours long standoff between SWAT officers and a gunman. Let's go straight to Matthew Torres, who's live in Madison. Matthew, this whole thing started late last night. It sure did. It started around 10 o'clock last night after a man and a woman went to the suspect's home in here on Florence Avenue to repossess his truck. That is where it takes the turn for the worse. According to Metro Police, that suspect pulled out a gun, threatened to shoot them, and then punched the woman in the face before vandalizing his own truck. But then, according to police, that man then went inside his home threatening to grab a shotgun. Obviously, the victims called police, and as soon as officers arrived, that man, according to them, barricaded himself, and this would last for between six to seven hours. SWAT officers were called out here. They deployed some of those flash bombs. We heard negotiators for a good while this morning trying to negotiate for this man to come out, but after many several failed attempts SWAT officers had no choice but to force their way in. they found that suspect inside the home luckily no one was no one else was inside this home at the time uh, he was taken into custody without incident he is of course waiting to be booked into metro jail this morning uh, we're told he is going to be charged with at least two counts of aggravated assault and possession of a firearm meanwhile as you can see now that the scene has cleared neighbors can freely go in and out of their homes after they were put on lockdown for almost seven hours. Reporting live in Madison, I'm Matthew Torres, News Channel 5. All right, Matthew, thanks for the update out there. In developing news now in Lebanon, police are investigating a crash that involved a pedestrian. Police tell us a vehicle struck 41-year-old Christopher Morgan on East High Street near the Wilson County Jail. Morgan was trying to cross the roadway, but he was not in a crosswalk. He did suffer a leg injury. The driver that hit Morgan is not facing any charges this morning. And happening now, police are searching for a man they believe is behind a break-in and a burglary. Now, we're told it happened in the Woodlawn area of Montgomery County yesterday morning. One homeowner was able to get some pretty good video of the intruder from its surveillance camera. So take a look. Around 6 o'clock Monday morning, a man forced his way into a Cooper Creek Road home, and I believe that was him pulling up there. Now, he ran away, though, when he came face to face with the homeowner of this house, and that's that good video right there. Now, about two hours later at a home on Freedom Drive, a man with the same description got in through a window and found the homeowner's son. Now, the intruder told the boy he was there to fix the water. But after the boy called his mother, he discovered the TV was missing. So if you know who this man is, call Crime Stoppers 931-645-TIPS. Amy, police are searching now for the gunman who attacked a Muslim MTSU student over the weekend. They're trying to find out if this is a hate crime or not. It happened at an apartment complex in Murfreesboro on Old Castle Drive. 21-year-old victim was ambushed by three people and they were wearing masks. They demanded his cell phone and cash. Those masks, as you see, kind of look like the Joker on the Batman movie. They put the weapon to the chest of the victim, pulled the trigger even. Luckily, it did not discharge. Police tell us the three suspects beat the student up, tried to get him in their car, but that didn't work. Investigators are wondering if this is a hate crime because the student's Muslim. Well, there's nothing to lead investigators to believe that there's any type of bias or prejudice that motivated this robbery. There were no statements that were made that were uh, anti-Muslim. Police are hoping they can catch those three people before they decide to strike again. Unfortunately, cold weather may have already led to the death of a homeless woman in Madison. 69-year-old Alice Sanders was sleeping in the back seat of a car behind a mechanic shop on Bronner Avenue when a friend sleeping in the front seat noticed she wasn't breathing and called for help. We brought this to you as breaking news yesterday morning. You may remember an autopsy is being conducted to determine exactly how she died. Metro Police say they don't suspect foul play. Happening right now, Montgomery County officials are taking action to make sure everyone does have access to a shelter in case it gets too cold outside. Commissioners approved a resolution last night allowing them to open more emergency shelters when necessary. The county designated eight possible locations, including the Civitan Park Community Room and the William O. Beach Civic Hall. Those are spaces that could be converted into shelters. They'll only be open if necessary and operated by the county. And with the first round of snow already Ready on the ground in Clarksville, the Montgomery County Mayor Jim Durrett says it's important to make sure that plan is in place. We went through our emergency management agency 
I talk to them uh, and talk to our EMS department, and they're all county-owned buildings, so it's a pretty easy choice. Montgomery County officials say they're going to evaluate the weather conditions every morning before deciding whether or not they need to open those shelters for people. Also, folks are coming together to keep the community warm as the temperatures start to drop. WGNS Radio says Murfreesboro's East Main Church of Christ hosting a free coat giveaway. The congregation has already collected 600 coats. That giveaway will be held from 9 until 2 on Saturday.